Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan McGee and welcome to The Shooting Show. Today we are on my syndicate shoot in North Yorkshire and we're going to try and get a grouse or two for dinner. So yeah, the, where, that's basically the parker, the, where we park up there. Oh, okay. We know you made it then. When you're going live on going live on Facebook, yeah, going live on Facebook, when you're going out, we're not doing that anymore, it's third and four, so you're not about it, just enjoy your day, like. Yeah. Well, apart from that, have a really good day, everyone. Cheers. You've lost the time, you've got one. <laughs> <laughs> right, gear up and then let's go. Oh no, I've got it dusty already. It feels really small, but like the barrels feel tiny. They are. Yeah, I need to figure out how to do this again. Nice. Yeah, it's stunning. We're here in North Yorkshire. It's at the start of October, sorry, start of August. It's still very, very warm. Um, but we know there's a few grouse about, so we're going to try and get a bird or two for our dinner tonight. But normally what would happen is the birds would come off this drive and just go straight over the wall down that way into the second part. But I've got the gun loaded, uh, just in case. It's nice and safe, pointed at the sky. Got someone calling a dog. So the gun that I'm using today is very, very special. It's a McNaughton skeleton round action in 28 gauge. And I saw this at the game fair which was two weeks ago, and the guys at McNaughton have sent me it. So I cannot wait to use this gun today. It's one that I've been looking at and dreaming about for a long time now, so I really hope we can have our first shots with it today on the moor. It's absolutely stunning. And this is a brand spanking new gun, 28 inch barrels, halfway through the grouse drive, as you might have heard. That horn now means we can only shoot behind because the, the guys who are beating are getting closer. So, I haven't had any shots yet, it's a small day, not expecting to have loads. I'm going to put my cartridges back in just in case anything does come over. But again, we're just shooting behind now. So fingers crossed we'll see one. Uh, a quiet first drive, second horn's just gone, so that means the drive's finished. We're going to walk around here now. Um, and I think I'll probably do some beating, whereas uh, Mr. Cameraman, Jamie, will probably stay with the guns. So see if we can get some more shooting. Get on, get on, get on, get on. Get on, get on, where is he? Find him. Good lad, fetch it on. Good lad, fetch it on. Good boy, fetch it on, fetch it on. Come on, fetch it on. Fetch it on, fetch it on. Fetch it on. No, fetch it on. Good boy, come on, fetch it on. Fetch it on. Good boy, dead. Good lad. Ah, Roxy. Good boy. It was a good shot, I would have said. Missed it with my first barrel, but pulled faster uh, through. Got it with second barrel. Uh, looks like a young, just a young grouse, but flying well. Uh, first one for this season. Hopefully, some more to come. Another 100 metres? Yeah. Just go to over Brow Hill. Just okay. crest it. Yeah, no worries. This was the bird's flying. Yeah. That was with like full, like, sort of auto expert all. Just about make out the beaters there. We're on about our third drive, but they are quite small, quite sharp drives. There's a horn system. One horn in front means we don't shoot forwards. One, uh, two horns means we finish the drive. 
So you can just about make out the beaters on the line there. They've, they've come up the hill, they're gonna push the birds towards us hopefully. We're getting nestled down uh, behind this wall here, so hopefully the birds won't see us. And we might get an opportunity to shoot one, who knows. We've seen 15, 20 birds already, which is quite good for this little stretch of, um, of moorland. I say it's not a keepered area, but it is surrounded by keepered moors. Um, but it's great, I mean, some of the guys have had their first ever shots on grouse. Um, it would be nice if I could get a chance to use this beautiful little gun at some point. Um, but, you know, that's not really why we're here. We're here to, to get some of the youngsters their first birds. Paul, one of my friends, shot his, uh, shot his um, first bird of the season on the last drive. Um, so fingers crossed, if we can get down behind this wall now, we might be able to push a few birds towards us and hopefully get a shot, but we'll see. So that means we're only shooting behind now. And normally on these sort of things, if it was a bigger day, you'd see half the people putting their guns up in the air to sort of say, okay, well, we know we can't shoot forward. It's like an acknowledgement sort of thing, which it's another thing that, you know, if you've never done this before, I'd be like, why the bloody hell are they blowing a horn? But it's part and part of the tradition. So we're only shooting behind now, which could be interesting when there's a cameraman in the way, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. We've seen a big covey of birds already, but we might not see any more birds. A lot of them went down the valley, but there's a really nice sort of like excitement and anticipation when you get with, with this sort of shooting. I mean, I, I like walked up grouse and what we can do here is do a bit of both. You can walk one with your gun. If there's anything gets up and goes out to the side or goes behind, you can still shoot it um, just to keep that safety level. But this, this sort of shooting where, you know, someone is pushing a bird towards you is fantastic. And this isn't a sport for you know, for lords and ladies, we're all normal people. We all start of, start of August. This is one of our traditions. We'll come up onto the moors. I think we shot three grouse already today. They'll all be eaten. It'll all go into the food chain, but we're all sort of normal people. It's a, it's not an expensive syndicate by any means. We're very fortunate to have this grouse moor or what we call our grouse moor and to actually have the chance to shoot these birds at the start of August. I thought there'd be loads on there. I thought there would have been. Nothing. Oh no, I'd go on my phone. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. Go on my own fucking phone. I would. I don't not do it's like everything. It's like, Dad, just stop. Just stop. Is that regularly? Yeah. yeah. I did, uh, well, I got there on the Thursday and then went and met some people and I'm like literally all, all Friday and Saturday. And oh, old chaps do it really. Uh, yeah, you can do, just make sure the guns know you. Yeah. Got a bit over the wall. Yes, yeah, yeah. This isn't hard, but we're allowed to pick. I can see what's happening from here, so I'll. Uh, the key. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Honey, here. Must have run round it three times. Good lad, put it on, put it on. Good lad, put it on. Good dogs. I think that's an older one. Uh, it is an older one. Yeah, looks an older one. I don't have um, the feet yeah. on that well feathered up. Yeah, uh, that that's the heat. And then not only that, it's basically the length of the claws. The pointy, pointy. Yeah, look at the length of that. Though. Yeah, that's yeah. Is that? I'm going to say, 
Yeah, it's off him. Martin needs corks. Five a day and sit you pushing it over the edge. No, we had him. Cheers. Thank you. Come. Good help. Cheers. Good help. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, up, dog. I've just seen somebody advertising a couple of Springer pups if anybody knows anyone. Anyway, anyway. Hey, Helene. Holy moly. These little guns as well, they make it so there's quite a few midges on it actually. <laughs> They're stunning little guns. So grouse are one of my absolute favourites to eat at the table and I think that the idea of normalising this sort of game bird and getting everyone to cook it would be absolutely fantastic. And I've said a few times, if you're going to cook a bird like grouse, put it in a pan as you would do a steak, essentially cook it like you would do a steak a couple of minutes either side then rest it for about 15 minutes, put it in there with some butter and some garlic or whatever and I, I eat them with chips, you don't have to have it with like parmesan crisps and you know these, these delicate sort of things, put some strong flavours in there and that is an absolutely fantastic way to cook this sublime little game bird. So you can start hearing them, they're still three or four hundred metres away. They're just pulling this bit of land in up at the top there. Even though it's only 20 degrees today, it's very hard to get the birds to move because uh, grouse, grouse sort of sit really, really tight when they don't have this sort of hot, uh, when, the, when the weather's really, really sticky and humid like this. So they can just hunker down, you can't see them, sometimes you'll walk over them. So it looks like that's the end of the final drive. It's been a very slow day for me. I haven't actually even fired a shot. But that is, that's what these sort of days are like. We're not expecting to come here and shoot loads and loads of birds. I think we've shot two gray, so four grouse in total. Uh, I reckon I've walked about 12,000 steps. It is probably 20 degrees. You can just about make out the rain rolling in the hills behind me, but it's been an amazing day. It's just an absolute pleasure to be out on a day like this at the start of August, start of the grouse shooting season. Thank you very much for joining us on The Shooting Show and we've a lot more of these Game Map of Britain episodes coming. Everything from driven snipe to driven pheasant, walked up shooting, grouse like we have today. So thanks very much for joining me. See you again soon. A lot of them are going down. Look at you, look, look, look. Right, well, we've got a couple of hours spare this afternoon, and um, I'm desperate to try the new uh, Brown and Max Cell 2. So, we're going to pop along. Uh, we've got a rape, bit of rape stubble between a bit of standing corn and standing beans. Uh, we're just going to set up and um, see what we can do and test the gun out.
copy there. Well, we're back out on the pigeons again. Um, one of my all-time favourite hobbies and part of my work. Um, what we've got here today, we've got a field of rape. We've got a standing field of beans in front. We've got standing wheat behind. We've got a stubble field over the back there. Um, pigeons are feeding all sort of round here. I'll plump for the rape. I mean, one, because they, they do enjoy the rape. And two, it's an open area that I can shoot and hopefully pick everything that I shoot. Um, we've been in now probably about 10 minutes, got half a dozen in the bag, which signs looks good. Um, I'm shooting the new Brown and Maxis Mark II. Um, had it delivered a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's a 30 inch barrel this time, and it's a on my farm certificate because it's a four in the chamber, a uh, four in the holding spell, one in the chamber. So uh, we'll give that a whirl today. Um, Over. The situation we've got today is uh, we're on just on top of a little brow here. Watch the flight line a bit. They're coming up the top of this hill here. Uh, but I've bagged the right hand side of the field off, stopped them dropping down up at just simple refuge bags on a on a stick to hold them out. The wind is just blowing the bags out, which is making them like a big balloon, which is doing a good job. It's just to keep the pigeons off that end get them coming over top of them, hopefully coming up the hill here into the decoys. Well, yeah, we've been here for about an hour, just over an hour now. Uh, we've got, I think it's 15 or 16 in the bag, but it's, it's noticeable now that they're, they're sort of coming over the field, just swinging a little bit to the left of us, and um, we're going by, or they just was dropping into the corner there. So what I've done is I've walked up, got the truck, gone around the line of flags, put another flag out in front of us, right the other side of the field, put the truck in the corner where they were landing, and put another bag out the left. Now hopefully anything come on here, hopefully we'll feel pressure to come in at these decoys. Hopefully.
Well, it's not been the biggest uh, um, day that I've ever had, but the main objective really was to come here and uh, give the Maxis a whirl. Um, I think it's got a 30 inch barrel on it, which just makes it a little bit heavy that end. But I think it, I felt that it, it swung really good in the hide, um, killed some, some good pigeons. Um, unfortunately, like the old Maxis, that missed a few as well. Um, but um, I mean, it really, I don't know what else to say to it apart from it's following on the Maxis line. You know, it seems a good, shootable, reliable browning gun, which I'm sure that we've got a, a good future with. If you aren't a member of BASC, it's time to join now. BASC, looking after your sport, looking after you.